நம்ம இன்னைக்கு வந்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா வயன் யார்டாக இருக்கும் கார்ன்வால்ல இருந்து நம்ம வயன் யார்டு இந்த இடத்துக்கு வர்றதுக்கு நமக்கு ஒன் ஹவர் டைம் எடுத்துச்சு ஸோ ஒன் ஹவர் டைம் ஸ்பெண்ட் பண்ணால் நம்ம இங்கே வந்திருக்கோம் இங்கே வந்து என்னென்னா இந்த கிரேப்ஸ் இருக்கு இல்லையா இந்த கிரேப்ஸ் வந்து எடுத்து இங்கே வந்து வயன் எப்படி ரெடி பண்ணுறாங்க அப்படிங்கிறது இங்கே காட்டுவாங்க நம்ம அதை வயன் டேஸ்ட் பண்ணியும் பார்க்க போகிறோம் அதுக்காக தான் மனக்கட்டு நம்ம இவ்வளோ தூரம் வந்திருக்கோம் ஸோ இந்த கிரேப்ஸ் பாருங்களேன் குட்டி குட்டியாக வந்து க்ரீன் கலரில் இருக்கு ரொம்ப குட்டி குட்டி பொடிசாக தான் இருக்கு எல்லாமே வந்து க்ரீன் கலரில் இருக்கு இதுதான் வந்து சைஸேவா இல்லை இன்னும் வந்து இதுனா வளர ஸ்டேஜ்னா க்ரோவிங் ஸ்டேஜ்லாம் இருக்கா அப்படின்னு நமக்கு வந்து கிளியராக தெரியல இப்போ வந்து ஒரு கைடு வருவாங்க வந்து நமக்கு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணுவாங்க இது என்ன இதில் வந்து எப்படி செய்கிறாங்க இது வந்து என்ன ப்ரொசீஜர்ஸ்லாம் அதில் இருக்குது அப்படிங்கிறதுலாம் சொல்லிவிட்டு நமக்கு டேஸ்ட் பண்ணுறதும் கொடுப்பாங்க ஸோ அவங்க வர வரைக்கும் நம்ம கிட்ட என்ன சொன்னாங்கன்னா இங்கே போய் சுற்றி பார்த்துட்டே இருங்க அவங்க பின்னாடியே வரும் அப்படின்ட்டு இருக்காங்க This is the stage of the grapes before they flower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Energy to go into ripening. No, so uh, we have a large canopy up here which will ஒரு <laughs> um and and they fill up with water as well but we don't want too much water because that dilutes the alcohol <laughs> and it also dilutes the flavor content as well um our wine grapes are very different to table grapes table grapes you buy in Sainsbury's Tesco's they're pitless they're usually seedless they're full of water they're not too much full of flavor they've got low acidity and they've got high sugar levels Whereas ours are very different, they're very much full of pep. So you're welcome to try one if anyone's brave enough. They're really sharp at the moment and they do have pep, so you sort of bite in and they spit out. <laughs> when is baby ready? I want to do the one. Um, they will be ready in end of September, start of October. Especially these ones, we're looking at, we're looking at the start of the end of September. So this is this is the back of the snow correct. And it goes a love during Verisson it goes a lovely silver colour, silver seafood colour. Mm. <laughs> Now you're a vineyard assistant. <laughs> <laughs> And this is a great example of what our what our grapes look like when they first start to form. So this is what we call inflorescence. Mm. Um, and this is the stage of the grapes before they flower. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So tiny. So tiny, but you can really see how, how they're, they're, they're almost grapes, can't yeah. you? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it takes them about five months in this climate to go from this to oh, okay. this here. Oh. I always take people up this row, and yet it's always messy. It's okay, I will show you. Um, and we're doing a task at the moment called leaf stripping. 
-hmm. Now this task involves removing all of the leaves from around the grapes uh, to help increase airflow to the grapes because our big risk at the moment as it's still hot but there's lot there's um quite a lot of humidity in the air quite a lot of rain our big issue at the moment is mildew so we're really nervous about mildew and our plants getting disease so we um we open up the air by ripping leaves off like that and it helps more airflow i mean you can see how clearer the canopy is yeah. here um, to up here it also by removing these extra leaves it means that the plant has more energy to go into ripening the grapes in time obviously we've still got our large canopy up here which will get in all of the energy from the sun that we need but our grapes have more energy that they can put into the grapes and not the silly big big leaves <laughs> These trunks are 10 years old. Yes. So how, uh, these ones aren't. These are a little bit younger. You okay. can see that they're just a little bit smaller. How much more years do they live? Uh, uh, vines, in general. vines in general will live forever. They can't join us for work quite as often. <laughs> so at the moment it really is just the two of us. Um, I'm going to walk us a little bit further up so that we get away from the bonfire. Yeah. So we're not inhaling all of those <laughs> woody fumes. Um, but yeah, when the kids are on holiday, Ben and Caroline have to spend a lot of time entertaining their little ones. I mean, I've said they should just get them, get them to work in the vineyard and talk money. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point in having kids if you can't get them to work? Yeah. Obviously, I'm kidding. Um, but yes, it's, it's just a good of us. The two of us. Is it happening throughout the year or during any season? Pardon? Is it like happening throughout the year or? Any? No, so uh, you get one harvest a year. Right. One which month? Pardon? Which month it will be? Like which season it will be? Uh, which season it will be like the harvest one? Yeah. We get one harvest every year, which means um, we harvest the grapes at the end of September, start of October. So okay. we take away the grapes. Okay. And at this time, the leaves go brown right. and they start to fall off the leaves off the tree we don't prune until all of our leaves have dropped right because um, we want the plant to absorb all of its energy back from the leaves and back from the grapes into the trunk and into its roots so it survives the winter nice. um, and during winter our vines go into dormancy so they they just they stay alive but there's no greenery and they don't grow um, and then they start to grow again in April May time okay where we start to get buds and start to worry about frost. Do you, do you have mm -hmm. to take them right back once obviously the leaves have gone? Yes, so yes. Right so, to... if you gather around closely, I'll show you what we do. So, you can see here we've got our trunk. This is our permanent wood. Um, we This is about 10, 12 years old, this trunk. Um, then we have our canes here. We call these our fruiting canes. Um, and this is this is this method is the double guillo, but most of our other vines are you we use single guillo. We just sometimes do double guillo at the end of the row because there's a little bit less space here, so we can grow it up here as well. Um, so we remove our fruiting canes at the end of every year. So we cut right back to here and here. So we just have the head uh, or the crown. And then all of the all of the greenery here because all of the greenery has grown this year because all this year's grown and what we do is we pick four four um new growth or new canes to just leave alone and not prune and we chop off everything else um, and we leave them completely alone to harden up over the winter and over the winter they go from being green they go, they go woody so they protect themselves a little bit more and then the following year when it when we're past rose petals and um, Turkish delight mm -hmm. So this, this one isn't quite as intense as a Gewurztraminer, but it has this lovely old sour note to it. 
involves removing all of the leaves from around the grapes uh, to help increase airflow to the grapes because our big risk at the moment as it's still hot but there's lot there's um quite a lot of humidity in the air quite a lot of rain our big issue at the moment is mildew so we're really nervous about mildew and our plants getting disease so we um we open up the air by ripping leaves off like that and it helps more airflow. I mean, you can see how clearer the canopy is yeah. here um, to up here. It also, by removing these extra leaves, it means that the plant has more energy to go into ripening the grapes in time. Obviously, we've still got our large canopy up here, which will get in all of the energy from the sun that we need. But our grapes have more energy that they can put into the grapes and not the silly big, big leaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're missing out on and um, and on the perfect the perfect alkaline balance to help bring our soil back up to alkaline because when you have a vineyard this big our soil gets quite acidic mm. so it drops down to 6.5 percent and preferably we want a more alkaline soil so a more 8 percent pH so we put a lot of limestone in the soil get a limestone and that helps bring up the pH yeah. right I'll if you guys up. hang around here for a little bit and talk about discuss the differences between these grapevines and these grapevines I will be back um, and Pinot Mernier doesn't really have many extra red fruit aromas at all it's quite bland aromas though but it is really important as that backup backup grape variety for your bulk um, and produces this amazing structure in a champagne variety and it produces a lovely body as well so it's really important it is a really important addition to the blend but it's usually on the smaller side so you usually have about 10 15 percent mm. of mernier and you know it's been a harder year if that percentage creeps up a little bit yeah you'll still, you'll still get some that will keep it from champagne you'll get others but we'll Go, go, go closer, go. Green, it's an electric, electric fence. Mm. You have the confidence to throw it. I'm going to over there. This one here, the brake pad. Slowly. Slowly. You're scared. A few moments later. Because that, that, that's why some of us like 
<laughs> like different stuff to others. And that's completely okay. Peach. 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 Slowly inflates and presses the grapes up against the side, and the juice comes out of the bottom. Then we use a pump that moves the juice from in there into one of our stainless steel vats. And you always have to make sure you have one stainless steel vat empty, um, because this is where this is where you can pump your wine into when you need to fine it or filter it. Um, or just clean, clean it. So there are several stages of filtering and fining. Um, and yeah, you always need something.